All right, so this is a 20 minute presenta presentation that's going to be done by GoLug founder Steve. All right, first of all, can everybody see my screen here? And is the font big enough for you? Yeah. Yep, okay. I can see it. All right, this is on asking doctor. Okay, and ASCII Doctor is a way to, it's a method to write once and have in multiple, huh? Uh, it's a way to write once and uh, publish to EPUB, HTML, PDF, and probably a lot of other things. Uh, how many of you have heard of, wait a minute, let me see if you, how many of you have heard of um, uh, ASCII Doc? Okay, ASCII Doc is a markup language, kind of like Markdown, and there are some other ones. And so what I, when, when do you, huh? What what when do you use when do you use ASCII docs when building a website or where? Yes, that's one place. If you're building a static web page, ASCII doc might be a way to do it. Uh, okay. If you're writing an EPUB, does that you know what an EPUB is? No. Okay. It's, you know when you read a book on your telephone on your cell phone. Okay. You know, you get a book, you get, you know, like Stand by Stephen King, you read it on your cell phone or on your uh, device, and no matter what the size of your device, uh, the words wrap, that's an EPUB. Okay. And then PDF is, you know, what you print to paper or view on a big screen. So the deal is, ASCII, doc, ASCII doctor can write to all three and can do a pretty good job of it. So for instance, hang on a second. Okay, here I have a book I wrote in 2011. And I wrote it in a product called Lix. Lix outputs to PDF. It does not output to EPUB. I had to write a whole immense bunch of software to get it to uh, output to EPUB. It was a mess, and it involved a lot of human intervention. So what I went ahead and did is I've used ASCII Doctor. Now, I'm going to show you how to make an EPUB of my book, it's called Place to Be, with ASCII doc Doctor. I go, first of all, LS, LTR. So you can plainly see I haven't written anything, I haven't modified anything since 6.30 tonight. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go compile .sh, that's a shell script I wrote, it's very simple, and It's building the EPUB right now. It's testing it. And if we get no errors, we're all set. Okay, and now what it just did, it put it on an ebook viewer. You know, on your device, you have to have a, a, an app to play various uh, kinds of books, whether they be the Apple ones or whatever, or EPUBs. Okay, so here's the cover of the thing. It's, you know, it's a pretty decent looking book. And, uh, you know, it word wraps for different size devices. So, if I go like this, 
Well, that there it goes. See it word wrapped. So, so Steve, do I have to install any special software to be able to read that? On some devices, yes, you do. On other devices, no, you don't. On your generic, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. On some you do, on some you don't. Uh, the, you know, the proprietary, the more, the more proprietary the brand, the more likely you're going to have to install an app. Because, for instance, Apple wants you to look at their books, not at Steve Lit book, Litt's books, or Robert's books, or Florence's books. Okay, but, but, but I mean, like, through, through an Android phone? Yeah, you just install. They have several apps that will read EPUBs. You install one of those and bang, you can read every EPUB on the market. Okay, so you saw what I just did. And let's make sure that that wasn't sitting around all this time. LSLTR, bang, that stuff all happened at uh, 1750. Oh, somebody's clock has a problem. Robert, what time does your clock say? Robert, you there? I, I had it muted because of the background noise. Uh, 816. Eight, eight, eight All right. Pay no attention to my clock. It's wrong. It's about 25 minutes wrong. I'll fix that when the meeting's over. All right, so you see what I did? You, did you see that it created the EPUB? All right, now let me take, well, first of all, let me show you what was in that compile script, okay? All right, the first thing I did is I removed the old EPUB, if there was one, and I removed the work directory. Then I used something called ASCII Doctor dash EPUB three, which is a sort of like add on to ASCII Doctor, and I used it on place to be dot a doctor, and then it created an EPUB, but it's not an EPUB I like, so I need to change that EPUB. So I unzip the EPUB because a, a non a non uh, copy protected EPUB is just a zip file with a bunch of directories and stuff, XML, HTML, that kind of stuff. Um, I went ahead and I unzipped it, and then I went ahead and I added my own CSS file. Florence, have they taught you CSS yet? Yeah. yeah, it's a really great, it's a great thing. I added it to the CSS that was already in there. This double arrow here just means append to. Then I re-zipped the thing through a bunch of arcane zip commands. And then I checked the EPUB, and it checked out correctly. It said no errors, no warning. And then I put it in EPUB. It in an EPUB viewer, and that's all I did. Now, let's say I had wanted, let's say I had wanted to write that to an HTML file instead. So what I would do is I would use ASCII Doctor. Not ask, whoops, sorry. Not ASCII doctor dash EPUB, but ASCII doctor. Um, <coughs> I would do it to XHTML5. HTML5 is a lot less problematic than everything else. And X, the X at the front of it means make it. Uh, What's the word for it? Not valid. Uh, legal XML. 
We're going to write it to a book format, so it's going to have lots of chapters, and that works best for an HTML file. And we're going to do that to uh, a doctor, a uh, place to be that a doctor. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this command. Uh, boy, that didn't take long. So if we if we look at it again, ls ltr, we see that we just made place to be that HTML. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do this. Oh, come on. All right, so we just placed to be dot HTML. We just made that. And bang, I wouldn't have really selected these spots and these colors, but, you know, it's not bad. Uh, if you see right here, you see this vertical, uh, this horizontal line right there? Uh, this thing's actually a story. It's a very short story. And every time the time jumps, every time we start talking about something new, uh, we use one of those things, you know, like three dashes or something to, to indicate that. And that comes out, by default, that comes out as a horizontal line. Okay, so I've written it to EPUB and to HTML. Now let's go ahead and write it to a PDF. Well, I already wrote the HTML, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to use Pandoc. Pandoc. Okay, you can look at that command. That's the command I'm going to run. And the deal is the S stands for standalone. It means it's going to make a standalone uh, LaTeX file, which means it'll work as a whole book. The F means from HTML. The T means to LaTeX. Uh, the O is uh, output file. And then the input file is place to be dot HTML. I run that, and now we should have a LaTeX file. LS LTR, and our latest one is to EX. Okay, and that looks something like this. So I'm not really going to talk much about this. Uh, you can see that it's just another it's just another uh, language. So now I'm going to convert that to a PDF. I'm going to go. Let me see. Lula Latex uh, place to be dot tech. I do that. This takes a while. LaTeX, L-A-T-E-X is pronounced LaTeX. T-E-X is pronounced tech. That's just a tradition. All right, so now what it's done, it should have written a PDF, LS, LTR. Indeed, the last things to be created were the tech and a bunch of intermediate files. Oh, I'm sorry, the PDF and the intermediate files. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at that, look at the PDF. MUPDF place to be dot PDF. And here we go. Now that's almost certainly too small for you to see. But the point is it writes it as a regular, ordinary thing that you would put on 8.5 by 11. So with one source file, I wrote three different formats. So what does
does the source file look like? Here's what it looks like. You see this one, uh, this one equal sign right there? Does everyone see that? That means that means H1. Okay, so which also in this case is going to mean something like chapter, except the very first H1 in the whole in the whole thing uh, is special. It's the cover page, or excuse me, it's the title page. So we go ahead, the first line after that should always be by convention. By the way, ASCII Doctor works. It should be the author. The second line should be the uh, version. And then you have a bunch of variables you can set. So I'm setting the document type to book. I'm setting the image directory. I don't have any images in this book, but if I did, they would be placed in an images directory in uh, below the current directory. Front cover image, well I name a front cover image, and that didn't work in LaTeX for some reason, but it worked for the uh, EPUB. And then this thing, I'm not going to explain that, I don't think it's necessarily right. And then the last thing I did, I had an include for each one of the chapters. So let's go ahead. The real, the real meat of the thing is in rules.ad. AD stands for ASCII Doctor. Yeah. Um, what can, the, can this script handle in coding, like for different languages? You mean like German, French, etc.? Yeah, and possibly like changing from writing from right to left instead of left to right. Here's the authoritative answer. I don't know. It's it's getting pretty it's getting pretty mature. So let's see. ASCII doctor multi language. The word language is unfortunate because it can mean two different things. Yep, yep. Well, wait a minute. It, it, here we go, using as dot. No. Okay, you, you've got to use UTF-8. Okay, you've got to use the lang attribute. So uh, I probably would have had something like lang English right here. I'm not positive. Maybe, yeah. But okay, so. I think it was line dot, line dot. All right, let's, let's anyway. see. Well, it just says the lang attribute. Well, yeah, yeah. Yes, there it is. Yeah, that's another way you can do it. Yeah, because if you're using Spanish, you're going to need the, uh, the what, what do you call it, the, the tilde over the M and all that stuff. Like the SP. Yeah. Okay. So, and Robert, this thing can't translate for you, right? I mean, you're still going to have to, you're going to have to write the thing five times if you have it in five human languages. And I don't know how it'll do right. from right to left. That's always a difficulty. Yeah, I, that's, that's something on my horizon that I'm trying to just gather information for. Uh, well, let's see. 